Today we have a guest speaker and he came with two other guests. I would like to first introduce uh, Stephen and Kemi who came along with our guest speaker. Can you rise up and just wait for Jesus? Amen. By God's grace, we've been talking about innovation and creativity in our Sunday services uh, in the month of May. Today is the last Sunday of May and we want to conclude uh, today's service with plugging into an anointing for exponential increase. Tell yourself I will increase exponentially. And today God has brought away Reverend Bolaji or Dejide, we call him Reverend BJ. Uh, that is what is known with Reverend BJ, uh, by God's grace. I've known him for how many years now? Several years. <laughs> Several years, right from uh, when uh, he was growing up as a vibrant BSF guy before moving to the university. Fortunately, uh, we studied together in the university, the University of Illinois. You know, that's where he completed his undergraduate studies before moving to the Nigeria Baptist Theological Seminary for his pastoral training. And God has blessed him so tremendously, and God has been using him uh, all across the nation. And we are fortunate to have him this morning in our midst. Uh, Pastor BJ, you know, is the host of uh, Flaming Assembly. There is this prophetic assembly meeting that holds every January. I think in the last how many years now, I've known that meeting to be holding. Ten. In the last 10 years. In the last 10 years. And I think the last one uh, hosted uh, Reverend Francis Walioke. Okay, Walioke was the guest speaker for the last prophetic assembly. Apart from that, he is the lay pastor of Believer Heritage Baptist Church in Elori, a youth focused, youth centered church over there in Elori, where he is blessing the tray. It is our joy to have. Uh, Pastor BJ in our midst this morning to lead us into experiencing anointing for an exponential increase. As a matter of fact, uh, he just did this book during his 40th birthday. I was in that meeting and I also made, I made some input into this book. And so I believe that uh, what he will not be able to touch on this morning, this book will give you the detail. We have a few copies here. Uh, if that is your interest at the end of this service, I know that by the time the service is over, you will know that you need to get this book. We have some copies available this morning. So with Jesus' joy, I would like you to please rise up on your feet to Jesus and not to man as you welcome Reverend BJ. Hallelujah. God bless you. If you are doing that for Jesus, please go ahead. I can hear a living soul. Please shout a thunderous. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Can you lift up your two hands wherever you are? Don't be seated any longer. Please rise. Lift up your two hands and worship the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the immortal has sent his word this morning and is set to impart and to raise men in this meeting. Can you say something good to him this morning? Can you worship him? Can you worship him? Can you worship him? Can you say something good to him? How many people are ready for the move of God in their life this morning? How many people are ready for the impartation of God uh, to move them from where they used to be to the next level God is taking them to? Wherever you are, lift up your two hands uh, and say something good to him this morning. God is about to change your story. God is about to help you. God is about to transform you. God is about to increase you. God is about to change your level. Worship the Holy Ghost. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Can somebody shout a louder amen? I'm not, here. I'm not hearing that amen. And I want your amen to open up this room. Is somebody ready here? Somebody shout a louder, amen. amen. Over the night, the immortal came to me and sent a word for somebody here. 
And I don't know who you are, wherever you are, and your amen is resounding and louder than your neighbor. The Lord is taking away smallness from your life. Please, if you have your Bible with you while you are standing, can you please carry, pick your Bible and turn it to Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19. If it's on your phone, please open. If it's on the screen, just make sure you are reading that scripture. Very powerful scripture God is sending this morning. That is the first assignment. Every smallness in your life. Who is that sister saying amen over there? The Lord take it away. In the mighty name of Jesus. I think people are ready for God here. Yeah? Let me announce to somebody here. Yeah, the Lord is taking the way completely from your generation. Smallness. Can you help me shout, I shall not be small. Oh, that's, that, you are not shouting in shout. I shall not be small. God bless those of you that were shouting. Shouting louder. I shall not be small. A close mouth is a close destiny. If everybody is confessing and you are keeping silent, you are, you are doing yourself. Lift up your right hand above your head. You will see that scripture very soon, but I want you to shout, I shall not be small. Do you have a name? Can you remember your name? Slot your name there. I, Bolaji or Deji, they will not be small. If somebody is still sitting beside you, something is wrong with that person. You should be standing up right now. Because every spirit of smallness, God is taking it away from your life. Is somebody here with me? Is somebody here with me? So raise your right hand above your head and shout, I slot in your name and say, I shall not be small. Are you ready to go? You are not ready. I want you to shout it, jumping, shout it so that devil can know that he has failed. Open your mouth and shout. I, Bolaji or Dejide, will not be small. If you have confessed that and you believe that God has answered you, give a God a shout. <laughs> Jeremiah 30, 19. Have you opened your Bible? Jeremiah 30, 19. Can we read loud and clear together? One, two, go. Then out of them shall proceed. Can, can somebody give God a thanksgiving? Up in the air. Oh, God. I have a long way to, do, to go this morning. But please, obey the instruction of God. Because the hand of God, the chariot of God, is in this meeting. And he wants to help somebody out of where you used to be to where God wants you to be. Is somebody here with me tonight? Is somebody here with me this morning? Is somebody here with me this morning? I announce from now on, Dancing of thanksgiving. Songs of thanksgiving. S sister, do you follow them? Come here. You come alone. Are you sure? Forget about somebody beside you. Say amen as if you are entering into it now. I decree you will begin to dance the dance of thanksgiving. Oh, this is an impartation rally. This is an impartation rally. As I say it, the power of God comes to you. And you begin to see. The Bible says, out of them shall proceed what? Shall proceed what? And the voice of those who make merry. Can I have some few people that want to make merry? Hey! Can I have some few people that want to make merry? Lift up your right hand above your head. I orchestrate this morning a feast and a party of your lifting. <laughs> you did not hear what I just said now. I orchestrate this morning a feast and a party of your lifting. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, I, God, God speaking, I will multiply them. How many people are experiencing multiplication? 
<laughs> Listen to me, choir. Addition is different from multiplication. I would be, what we are in for in this service is not addition. It's exponential. Is somebody here with me this morning? Please, am I speaking to a living soul here? In your academic multiplication. That amen did not show that students are in this hall. In your academics multiplication. I have seen little work and great reward. Multiplication is what we call that thing. Little work, great reward. Lift up your right hand if your, if your right hand is still functioning. And shout amen than your neighbor. Receive multiplication. In the name of Jesus. If God speak, every other word is useless. Am I speaking to somebody here? If God speaks, every other word is what? It's useless. The Lord has said over you, multiplication. It does not matter whatever is roaring, they will bow. Because God said, I, I am that I am. I am that I am. Every other God does not exist. I exist alone and I exist in you. So he said, I am we multiply you. So lift up your right hand and say amen. Is a word of prophecy over the night for somebody saying amen. The Lord will multiply you. Somebody just say amen right now. You will receive alarm that will turn to alarm. Alert that we turn to alarm. The Lord will what? We multiply you. Say to somebody by your side, God is multiplying you. Shout, shout, shout to that person. Don't be, shout, God is multiplying you. In case you are seated with somebody that cannot talk, as you talk that person, the spirit of dumb, dumbness will disappear. Are you here with me? Touch that person and say, the Lord is multiplying you. Ah! God is in this meeting. Do you see what I saw? The Bible says, and they shall not diminish. Your CGPA will not reduce. Hey! So you can say amen. So you can say amen. Okay, let me repeat that word. How many final year students are here? Inanos, Katoli, and Dazan, Toli, and Dazan. I prophesy over your life, final year students, wherever you are here, and you are saying that powerful amen, your CGPA will not reduce. You will not diminish. 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 Do you see the next thing there? The Bible says, I will glorify them. I will what? <laughs> Choir, God bless you. You are alive with me. I will what? I will glorify them. Is somebody here with me? Look at somebody beside you. Give him or her a high five and say, God is glorifying me. Oh, I have come to, I have come to Bowen University where people cannot talk here. Can you talk? So give somebody high five and say, God is glorifying me. <laughs> Lift up your two hands above your head. I just saw new clothes being dropped. God is beautifying some destiny here. God is beautifying some destiny here. Those of you at the back, far back there, if your amen can roar, you are having it now. God beautify your destiny. God beautify your destiny. In the name of Jesus. 
How many people can see the last phrase there? Oh, I don't know if you can see it. I can see it. <laughs> Multiplication. Not diminishing. But God said he will glorify me. What is the last word there? And don't say they again. Don't say they again. Put yourself there. And I shall not be. Hello? Hello? Listen to me. Smallness is not in size. Am I speaking to somebody here? Yeah? If you look at me and say I am small, you are wrong. Oh, mama, mama, mama. Hey, is somebody here this morning? Is somebody alive this morning? David appeared before Goliath. David was like me. We were short, but we are mighty. Hey, I don't know who I'm speaking to in this meeting. Your size did not determine where God is taking you to. Oh, Goliath cannot stop you. Goliath may be, may be huge, but they are not your size. Oh my God, am I speaking to somebody here? Goliath appear. Goliath appear. And David look at him. He said, you this thing, because there is a spirit in me that is God, the spirit of the almighty. You can't touch me. You can't move me. You can't do any harm to me. But today, I'm going to remove your head. And I will call carcass. I will call dogs to lick your blood. I don't know what is that giant before you. Today, please lift up your right hand and say, Amen. There is a mighty move of the spirit in this meeting. Those giants will fall down flat. God said, you shall not be small. Do you know the meaning of that? You will not be small in life. Oh. You will not be small in your career. Oh. You will not be small in any area of your life. Did I have a living soul to say amen? So I give you one minute. I want to go into teaching. I give you one minute. I want you to banish the spirit of smallness. Please. See what I'm seeing right now so that that spirit can jump out of your life. Can you hold somebody beside you? God bless a sister there. She's, she understands. She's already pray praying. Hold somebody that you can pray for. If that person is not shouting, something is wrong. That person must shout. That person must shout. That every spirit of smallness in your life, I banish them now. Open your mouth and fire. Fire, fire, fire. I banish the spirit of smallness. Smallness academically, smallness spiritually, smallness financially. Oh, somebody's not praying here. Somebody's not praying here. You have not followed them here. You have come to meet with God. Oh, a closed mouth is a closed destiny. Open your mouth and pray for that brother. God bless you, brother. You are praying. God bless you, brother. You are praying. Pray for that person beside you. I banish the spirit of smallness. That is the first assignment God has given to me tonight. Over the night, he says, say to them, take out of their life spirit of smallness. Every spirit that want to limit you, every spirit that want to limit you, get out of this life. Are you praying for that person? People at the back, are you praying? Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Choir, please pray. Get Get rid of smallness. You must not be small. You must not be small. In nano tecanto palanda, e plende le cotonja, e non non suria. Oh, you must not be small. You must not be small. You must. Oh, ah, you are not talking. Hey, say it louder. Ah, you must pray for that fellow. You are not going to be small. Oh, thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, I will pray. Turn to another person. Hold that person. You are going to say this last prayer for now. You are going to decree. I command you 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, move to your next level. Let increase come. Let multiplication come. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Are you ready to pray for that person? If you hear one, two, three, don't wait for the fire before you begin to pray. Please, open your eyes. Look at me, people of God. I permit you to drop, to get out of somebody that is not praying. I saw a massive hand of God over everyone here that his that this heart is open to enter into increase for the rest of your life. A meeting like this is a divine encounter that when you enter into it, your, your generation will be coming to you daily and you will be having something to give them. Are you holding that person? Another person? Are you holding that person? You are going to shout in the name of Jesus. I command you, move to your next level. Multiplication, increase. Open your mouth, one, two, three, fire. Oh, God bless you, brother. You are praying. Oh, tonight, today, this morning, is your morning. You must enter, you must enter. You must enter, you must enter. Enter into it. Enter into it. It's the first assignment. I'm moving to the second assignment right now. And it's going to be brief. But enter into your portion now. Hey! In a man shot a lash. In a man shot a lash. Hey! Here is the spirit of the Lord. Here is the spirit of the living God. Here is the spirit of the living God. Here is the spirit of the living God. Bring him increase. Increase on every side. Increase. Increase, 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 increase for the staff, increase for the student, increase for the leaders, increase, increase, increase. Yes, 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 yes. Receive that increase. Oh, that's right. Thank you, Father. Lift up your two hands, everyone. You can drop that hand. Lift up your two hands, everyone. Lift up your two hands, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. You are a faithful father. And you have done what you have decided to do right now. Thou spirit of smallness. Thou spirit of limitation. Thou spirit that is shouting and monitoring you that you cannot cross the level of your fathers. Who is that person saying amen here? Yeah. That spirit is destroyed now in the name of Jesus. Kaina pino poi katuza. Is your two hands lifted? Ina pori ketonda labasha. Arupende linda lapos katolia. Hear the voice of the Lord. Thou spirit of smallness and limitation, you are banished from this life now in the name of Jesus. 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 Let the release of the Spirit of God locate everyone, one after the other right now, so that that spirit of smallness can disappear from your life. Right now, right now, I release the release, the power of God upon you right now. That spirit of smallness that has catch up with your fathers, catch up with your parents. Right now, you are getting out now. 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 Out, 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 in the name of Jesus. Lift up your two hands. I saw a movement. You are moving now. You have stayed so long on that mountain. The Lord said, move forward. And I hear the voice of the Lord shouting to somebody. There is a massive progress that is released in this meeting. Who is that person? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. The first 21 people right now receive the spirit of progress. Now, in the name of Jesus. Now, 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 no more redundancy. No. I say it one more time. We are at those 21 people out of this multitude. Lord, increase it to 50. Increase it to 100. 
Increase it to 500. Increase it to 1,000. So I decree right now, everyone that is shouting amen, receive that massive spirit of progress in the name of Jesus. It is done. It is done. Oh, that amen is not correct. It is done. It is done. So I want you to rejoice because you are already moving. <laughs> rejoice. I say rejoice. Glory to God. God bless you. Please take your seat for a moment, for a while. It's a privilege and a honor to stand before God's people and to share the word of the Lord. Can you help me celebrate my father in the Lord? The one that picked us. The Lord has used him for us for several years. Please, is this the way we celebrate our chaplain? Reverend Dr. Gideon Akabi, please go ahead and celebrate. Where we are coming from, we honor ministers of God. We celebrate our pastor. God bless you, sir. We honor you, sir. All, oh, every leaders, every servant of God working with our father, we celebrate you, all the staffs, and God bless you in Jesus' name. Turn to somebody beside you and say, you are unique. Shout, shout, shout. You are not even sure. Shout, you are unique. And you are enjoying increase. Open your Bible with me to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 6. From verse 1 through to 7. Briefly, I want to give you four principles. That makes you enjoy exponential increase. Four principles. That makes you enjoy exponential increase. Second Kings chapter 6, from verse 1 through to 7. And the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there. And let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered, go. Then one said, please, consent to go with your servant. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to the Jericho, they cut down trees. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water and he cried out and said alas master for it was borrowed so the man of God said where did it fall and he showed him the place so he cut off a stick and drew it in there and he made the iron float therefore he said pick it up for yourself so he reached out his hand and took it. God has a plan for you. Every born again Christian and everyone that is born of God, God has a plan and a purpose for such people. You are not here by accident. You are not here without a purpose. God has orchestrated your path into this citadel of learning because he has a purpose, because he has an agenda, because he has a plan for you. And you must not miss out of God's plan. You must not miss out of divine agenda. You must not miss out of the purpose of God while you are here part time. You must not miss out of the essence while you are living. Every born again Christian, everyone that is here on earth, there is a destiny attached to them. And it's unfortunate that you, by choice, can determine or change the destiny God has given to you. There is a plan of God for you. And the Bible said that I have a plan. And my plan and my thought for you cannot be thwarted. Job 42 verse 2. The plan of God cannot be thwarted. 
He may rather subchange you. But his will and his purpose will stand. That is why everyone listening to me, you must understand that in the art of God, he has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. He has an agenda for you. You must live to discover it. Not just discovering it. You must live to actualize what God has said to you. What God has proposed for you. What God has revealed to you. What God has said about you. I have seen over the scripture that the plan and the purpose of God for you stand sure. Only your choice. Only with your choice you can maintain, you can actualize, or you can divert the purpose of God for you. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, the Bible says, For I know the thought I have towards you. I know the thought I have towards you. Says the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil. And to give you a future and a hope. So in the agenda of God, he has a purpose for you. He has an agenda for you. And he wants you to move. He also said that I did not want my children to be stagnant. I want them to move. You see, the plan of God for you is that you keep progressing. He does not want you to stop. When you look at Exodus chapter 14, from verse 14, 15, 16, you will discover that the people of Israel, they were marching to their promised land and suddenly they came in contact with a limitation, a natural barrier. And suddenly they stopped and they began to murmur. Excuse me, where you are now and you are complaining is not the best for you. Complain will not move you to the next level. Is somebody here with me this morning? Complain will never move you to the next level. Discover what to do and obey the instruction of God and move on. The Bible says, God said to Moses, Moses, what are you doing here? And Moses said, there is this, there is that. He said, no, tell the people of Israel to stop crying unto me, but move forward. God wants you to move forward. Can you help me tell somebody beside you, move forward? Oh, I want you to shout it as if you mean it. Shout, move forward. I want you to receive authority to command that person to move to the next level. Shout, move forward. Shout, move forward. God did not want you to be stagnant, sir. God did not want you to be stagnant, man. God wants you to move. God wants you to move. God wants you to move. God said, move forward. Why Moses obeyed the voice of the Lord and he decided to move forward with the people of Israel. What happened to the Red Sea? The Red Sea parted. Lift up your right hand wherever you are. As you move forward in this meeting, who is that person? Say amen to your neighbor. I decree in the mighty name of Jesus, every natural barrier, every physical barrier, every spiritual barrier, they will give way. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. So God wants us to move forward. God did not just want us to move forward. God wants us to experience greatness in increase. Oh, he wants our increase to be great. He wants to increase our greatness. Look at what the Bible says in Psalm 71 verse 21. The Bible says, you shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Psalm 71 verse 21. You shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. That means where you are now is not where God wants you to be. God wants you to increase. God wants you to move. God wants you to become. God did not want you to be satisfied where you are. He has ordained you to enjoy greatness. When you look into the scripture, you will see in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18, he said, but the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. So each time God comes to a man, he has programmed you to increase. Each time God comes to a man, he has ordained you, he has planned, he has wired you to enjoy increase. But unfortunately, it's not everybody that is enjoying increase. It's not everybody that is experiencing the mind of God for their life. But today, 
God has sent me here for you. Every area you are experiencing limitation, the Lord is taking them away. In the mighty name of Jesus. So God wants you to enjoy increase. Look at the scripture we read. Very powerful scripture indeed. We saw four major things in that scripture that if you apply it to your life, from now on, you will continually experience increase. Not just increase, exponential increase. The Bible says something that is very powerful in that scripture. When you look at 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, the son of prophets came to meet the prophet and said, Sir, where we are is too small for us. Hello? 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 Are you still here with me? Where we are is too what? Small for us. And that reminds me that it is possible for a senior pastor to be enjoying AC in the office to forget that there is a need for expansion. It is possible, seriously speaking, for your parents to enjoy that duplex and forget that they can own estate. Until you get to a point as you walk with God to begin to see that you are more than where you are, you are not going to move anywhere. It is possible for you to be enjoying one level and God is saying, I have a better level for you. One of my church members, a student in the University of London, came into my office and she was dancing. I, I said, what is happening? Why are you dancing? She said, I have testimony, Pastor. I said, that's a good one. So I was, I was eager to hear what she wanted to say. Said, they just released our results. I said, ah, glory to God. Alpha. He said, there is this particular cause. This particular cause. I could not write well in that, inside that exam. In fact, I thought I have carried it. But they give me D. You enter my office. You come and share testimony of D. And you are rejoicing. Ah, excuse me. I said, did you have people that had AIDS? He said, ah, plenty of. Let me pray for somebody that will say amen. You will not be candidate of D. Plenty, oh. I said, plenty. Plenty. And you are here. It is not God that answer your prayer. It can't be God. <laughs> the lecturer just show you mercy. Excuse me. I tell you, if you have something and you are celebrating it, you will not be able to think that there is a higher level for you. I like to speak to young people here. If you are enjoying where you are part time, you should give thanks. Good. I thank you, Lord, for where I am. You understand me? But don't remain there. Next year, if we come here, we should see you in a better place. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So that is the divine agenda of God. The sons of prophets came to the prophet and shouted, Servant of God, prophet, this place is too small. And I saw the first principle in that scripture. What is the first principle? The first principle is the state of your heart. Anyone that wants to enjoy increase, the state of your heart matters. When the state of your heart is comfortable with where you are, you aren't going anywhere. When you are not panting for another grace, for another level, you will remain where you are. I remember in 2004, I was in redemption camp for Holy Ghost Congress, and I was fasting three days. And Baba Deboye came to the people, and he said, I saw the angel of God 
enter into this place and they are distributing gifts. So I sat down. I asked myself a question. What happened to my own eyes? I can also see. And I left camp that year with a serious hunger in my heart that, Lord, you can also take me to another level where I will begin to walk in the supernatural. And the Lord answered my prayer. Because the state of my heart was not satisfied to the level where I am. Those sons of prophets, their state of heart yearned for bigger, for expansion, for increase. So they shouted, excuse me, servant of God, our prophet, this place is too small for us. Can I speak to you brothers and sisters? Where you are is too small. Move to your next level. Where you are is too small. God is asking you, move. What happened to your heart? Instead of you engaging your heart in productive things that will bring increase, you are engaging it with evil thought. There is no heart that is engaged with evil thought that increase will come. Increase come upon a state of heart that is yearning for next level. I want to move. I want to become. I want to enter into a new dimension of God's grace for my life. That is my heart desire. Excuse me, what is your heart desire in this meeting? You still want to follow. You still want to follow, follow. Excuse me, forget about it. God is looking for men and women that will be yearning in their heart to enter into a new dimension of God for their life. So they said, this place is too small. Can you even shout to somebody, this place is too small for me. Look at that person. I want to talk to that person. This place is too small for me. Excuse me, if you have been having AIDS all around, there is still another level. There is still another level. And God is, is shouting, I can take you there. Wherever you are, can you lift up your right hand? I want to prophesy increase over somebody that can say a louder amen. From now, in the mighty name of Jesus, little work, great gain. I hear a voice in the middle, dear. Let that voice be louder. Little work, great gain. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your state of art is important. Your state of art is important. Your state of art is important. The men shouted, this place is what? Do you know they were saying this place is too small, not for sure. Many of our craving, many of our cry is that we want to show to somebody that we are better than them. God doesn't answer an increase like that. Is somebody hearing me? Is somebody hearing me Yeah. You God does not answer man that is craving for greatness so that he can show somebody. So that he can show somebody. So that he can, you are praying that God should build a house so that you can tell your friend that now I have built a better house. God will not answer. God is looking for men and women that has a correct heart in order to carry the kingdom thing in beer on this heart. Your state of heart is the first thing that God, nothing grows on a soil that is not fertile. Your heart is your soil. Your heart is your, is the soil that grows every increase. So please, walk upon your heart in this meeting so that you can become what God wants you to be. The Bible says, they say, see, their state of heart was correct. And the Bible says, when you have a prepared heart, there are three major things you will, you will be craving for. You will be dissatisfied with where you are. You will seek information of the next level God is taking you to. And you will take an appropriate step to get there. You are dissatisfied with where you are. You seek information of the next level and you take an appropriate step, you become what God wants you to be. For it doesn't stop there. Look at what the Bible said. They said, see now, I saw the second principle. 
after your state of art. The second principle is vision. 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 Yes, sir. You cannot become what you did not picture. What you did not picture in your art, you cannot experience it. That is why your art is important. When you are giving your art to Jesus, you will begin to see a right perspective the way God wants you to see it. So vision becomes a key thing in increase. Vision. 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 One day, Lot departed from Abraham in Genesis chapter 13. And God came to Abraham. He said to him, he said, what did you see? What did you see? There are some brothers here, you must not ask them what they see. If you ask some brother what they see, is a sister they see. They did not see increase. Brother, the Lord will touch your eyes. Did I have living brothers here? I said, the Lord will touch your eyes. You will begin to see correcting. Do you know that sister love a brother that have vision? Sister, we want to die to a brother that have vision. Even when the brother give her breakfast ten times. <laughs> is, is somebody getting what I'm saying? He will still say, you are mine. He is not running after an empty brother. He's running after a visionary brother. Can I say something to you? Sister, God wants you to carry vision. We brothers are tired of Wapa me, Beru me, Baba. We don't have load to carry again. Please, am I speaking to sister here? The choir are frowning. Don't frown. We are tired. For how long are we going to carry load of a visionless sister? We are looking for sister that carries vision, that can work with us in achieving great things. Let me pray for somebody here. Your eyes will be open. Oh, say amen. Your eyes will be open. You've got to see. In the next five years, where will you be? What do you see? In the next two years, what do you see? You have been seated for so long without casting your vision. What did you see? You can stand there and be praying for increase. If you did not see increase, increase will not come. I saw increase in every aspect of my life. And what I saw is what I become. What you see is what you become. Can I speak to somebody here? Please see. What is your vision? What do you want to become? Increase call upon men and women that has vision. Increase come upon people that has vision. The sons of prophet shouted, See! Prophet, this place is too small. Do you see your next level? Do you see where God is taking you to? Did I have people that can see that they will never be small? Did I have people that can see that God is taking them to a higher place? I tell you sincerely speaking, the more you see, the greater you become. The more you see, the greater you become. Number three, the third principle that I saw in that scripture is healthy relationship. Do you want to enjoy increase? Healthy relationship. The Bible says the sons of prophet. So in the school of prophet, they were working together with one art to achieve expansion. Yes, sir. People you work with matter in your destiny. Oh. Hello, ma. Hello, sir. People you work with matter in your destiny. I will forever thank God the year I met Reverend Gideon Akambi. I will forever thank God the year I met Reverend S.O. James. Men you meet in life determine how far you will go. Excuse me, 
You will be seated in your room and the people you have built a solid relationship with, they will mention your name at the top. How many of you remember Joseph? Joseph could not appear before Pharaoh. But there is somebody that has interpreted the dream. Please, am I speaking to living souls here? Relationship, value relationship, LD1. Those of you that you are going out with friends that are helping you to smoke weed, they are destroying your destiny. Increase not can never come like that. You've got to build a system of relationship with correct people. These sons of prophet came together and they said, excuse me, let's agree together and speak to our father in the Lord. And God helped them. Relationship matters. Now you have come to a school like this. Who are, who are your friends? Healthy relationship is what makes way. Healthy relationship is what makes people become. Healthy relationship is what guarantees success in life. People you are working with, they can man or, 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 or make your life become great. You must make a choice of people. Excuse me, I have made a vow. I don't waste time with people that did, not, that did not see what I saw. You must choose your friend wisely. Because in exponential increase, I, let, I like you to understand that relationship is important. You will know somebody that will mention you and mention what you are doing somewhere. And when they mention you, they will say, oh, let's go and look for him. And thus we begin to open for him. Who are your friends? Every time you sit with them and you share your vision, they said, you are too proud. You better pick race. You don't work with people you share your vision with and they tell you you are proud. Because vision helps you become, but good relationship makes you actualize it. And the last thing today, the Bible says, when the sons of prophet came to meet him, and he said, go, let's expand. The prophet also want expansion. He said, let's go. Suddenly, one of them said, excuse me, we don't want to go alone. Go with me. One of the things that make productivity happen in life is the presence of God in your life. And that is what is coming upon you today. There is going to be an anointing of God over your life that everything you touch will multiply. Oh, God bless you if you are saying amen. Everything you touch will multiply. You will experience exponential increase by the presence of God. Excuse me, sir. Wherever you are and the presence of God is not there, nothing grows. Nothing grows outside his presence. And that is why tonight, today is that anointing for exponential increase. That the every presence of God, the atmosphere of God will come upon your life, wherever you are, upon your academics, wherever, upon your family, that things will just change rapidly. Because it takes the presence of God. Look at what happened in that story. When they got to where they are cutting the tree, the axe head fell where? Inside the water. What if the presence of prophet is not there? Is somebody getting what I'm saying? They will have been wasted. The man shouted, ah, it was borrowed. I perceive strongly in my spirit here that God wants to restore every virtue that has gone out of your life. Ah, accepted, there was a mistake and the axe head fell inside the water. I have the good news for you. There is divine presence of God here that can restore you, that can bring things back to you. And you will experience exponential increase. I know you have been struggling with masturbation. And as you do that, things get out of your life. Great gift, great virtue disappear. But I perceive the every presence of God in your life right now. That want to bring restoration. Suddenly, the prophet said, where did it fall? 
you must identify that thing that is taking God's presence away from your life if you want to experience exponential increase. He said, where did it fall? And he said, here. And the presence of, of the man of God brought back the axe head. I perceive strongly right now that God wants to help somebody. There's going to be a restoration of grace. Restoration of opportunities. Restoration of health. Restoration of favor. Restoration of everything good about you. Because his presence is here. All what you need to do tonight is to identify the area you need increase. Identify what you have lost. Identify that thing that will not allow you to become. Identify what is hindering that increase. Identify. It may be a negative relationship. Identify it and be ready to get rid of it. Rest on your feet right now. We want to pray. Rest on your feet. We want to pray. I perceive strongly the every presence of God is here to help somebody right now. To help somebody right now. To help somebody right now. Can you lift up your two hands? Lift up your, your, your two hands. Please, can you lay your hand upon that keyboard, please? Lay your hand upon that keyboard. Let me hear sounds. The power of God is here and the presence of God is here. How many people are ready for the move of God here? I see. I see. I see the presence of God every wanting to restore and wanting to rebuild. Wanting to help somebody in this meeting right now. Lift up your two hands. Right now, can you begin to confess those areas you know you have missed it? God wants to help you right now. God wants to help you right now. God wants to help you right now. You don't have business with anyone. You have business with God. So confess personally with God. Because there is an outpour of grace here that want to help somebody. That want to help somebody. That want to help somebody. Confess, 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 confess. Confess it, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get out of a wrong relationship right now. I get out of a wrong relationship. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have you identified that area? God wants to help you right now. 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 Have you identified that area? Have you identified that area? Oh, God, I am here. I am here. I need your presence. I need your help. Oh, I need your help. I hear a voice in my spirit. God is saying there is somebody here that each time you pray, you experience dryness. You experience dryness. And the Lord said, I want to restore you. I want to restore you. I want to restore you. Wherever you are, oh, lift up your right hand. I want to pray for you right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Can you help people in this meeting right now? I see an exponential increase coming upon their life. And I want, oh Lord, you to help them to undo these weaknesses in their life, to undo this area of their life, so that things will go as you have planned. Now, talk to God, talk to God, talk to God. Let me pray, let me pray, let me pray specially for these people right now. Wherever you are, you have noticed an area in your life that is not working because of one thing or the other you have done. And you are saying, Pastor, I want you to pray specially with me. You are the one. Every other one, please put down your hand. If you are the one making that decision, wherever you are, lift up your right hand above your head. I want to pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You have identified an area that increase is not coming because of one thing or the other. God bless you. Lift it above your head. Lift it above your head. You must not be ashamed of what God is doing here. God is restoring you. God is restoring you. God is restoring you right now. God is restoring you. God is restoring you. God is restoring you. Oh God, I ask right now that your hand will locate these ones. You will pardon their sins. You will forgive their iniquities. And I command restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Restoration. Restoration. Restoration, restoration, restoration in the name of Jesus. Everyone in this hall, please lift up your two hands. We are going to take this song two times and we will release the hand of God over your life for increase. And my Father and the Lord, we also pray for you right now. I perceive strongly a restoration is happening in this meeting. Please lift up your two hands. Bo, bo, go, tie. 
Shooty Cola. If you know that song, please join us. Go, go, Agbala. Connect yourself with the Holy Ghost here right now. Shooty Cola. Olua. <laughs> your voice should come up louder than that. Lift up your two hands and sing. Two more times. Lift up your two hands. It is your prayer tonight. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. people right now. For the last time, lift up your two hands and shout, go, go, go. Yes, Lord. We command restoration. We command restoration right now. In the last. If you can pray in the Holy Ghost, if you can pray in the Holy Ghost, can you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost? we are going to do now, two things, listen to me very carefully, two things, the Lord said that we need to create a space for him in our lives, so that he can be the Lord indeed over our lives, that is the way forward, so if you are here this moment, and you want to renew again and again, it's not that you are not a child of God, you are a child of God, but you know it's a journey and it's a long journey. The Bible says we shine brighter and brighter until the perfect day. The perfect day is not yet here. The perfect day is when Jesus appears in glory and we receive, I mean, we receive the consummation of our redemption. So between now and the perfect day is a long journey. And so we have this, you know, uh, breaks every now and then. So maybe you have observe that you have slided, you have created a gap, and you have allowed something else to occupy the space that Jesus is supposed to be the Lord indeed. And this morning you want to say, Lord, I want to create a space for you. That is the first thing. And I would like you to, if that happens to be your concern, I would like you to please, in a few seconds, begin to pray and say, Lord, I rededicate my relationship. I want to experience a firm and a consistent connection with you. If that is your own place, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. I'm still going to ask you to identify yourself so that we can pray together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. The second that is very, very important. Listen to me, everybody. The second that is very, very important. Um... We've been praying about this since Thursday, as the Lord gave me that revelation 
uh, in the morning, early hour of Thursday, around 3 a.m., there is something that is breathing on this campus that is called the spirit of rebellion and disobedience. And it's manifesting in so many of us here. The spirit of rebellion and the spirit of disobedience. That is the spirit of witchcraft. I'm not going to ask anybody. We are going to rebuke that spirit. When you feel too big before God, when you ignore instruction, you will think you are doing it. On, it's the devil that is moving you, motivating you until he leads you into destruction. Disobedience. That's what caused Saul to lose the kingdom. He lost the kingdom completely. And God handed over his kingdom to another person. Disobedience can affect your destiny forever. Rebellion can land you into destruction in an instance. And I fear in my heart that that spirit is breathing on this campus. So this month of May, we bring down the satanic stronghold and altar of rebellion and disobedience on this campus. It manifested grossly on Wednesday. And social media was full of that rubbish and nonsense. You think you are doing something that is fun. It's not fun. It's of the devil. It's of the devil. And I stand as the anointed of God today in the name of the Lord, especially Fanaya that are going out. Don't go with that spirit of rebellion. Don't go with that spirit of, of disobedience. It's witchcraft. It's of the devil. It can destroy your destiny, especially when you manifest rebellion and disobedience in the presence of God. It's dangerous. Listen to me this morning. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. Saul lost the kingdom. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. <laughs> you may think you are doing big man, big woman. It's an error. It's the spirit of error. The Bible says in the last day, that is the kind of spirit that we manifest. It's the spirit of destruction. The Bible says the wrath of God is coming upon the children of disobedience. That will not be your Lord. That will not be your Lord. Everybody that is in the right spirit agree with me. It doesn't matter who you are. I'm not pointing to any individual in particular. But all the children of God here, who are children of God indeed, join your voices with me. Let's destroy the spirit of disobedience. The spirit of rebellion is witchcraft. It's the spirit of witchcraft. It's of the devil. It's of the devil. In the name of Jesus, we bring down your stronghold. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 6, we will be ready to punish all disobedience when our obedience is complete. Today we bring you down in the name of Jesus. It's of the devil. It's of the devil. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of disobedience, every spirit of disobedience, rebellious spirit, in the name of Jesus, we bring you down in the name of the Lord. We challenge your stronghold. You will not, you will not prosper. You will not grow on this campus. We bring you down. We bring you down. We bring you down in the name of the Lord. We shatter your altar. We shatter your altar in the name of Jesus. The Bible said they will be disobedient to parents. There are many father figures on this campus. Our vice chancellor is a father figure. If he gives an instruction and you rebel, it's the spirit of the devil. In the mighty name of Jesus, your whole master, they are father figure. If you rebel against the instructions of the devil, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bring you down. We bring you down. You will not prosper on this campus. You will not prevail. In the mighty name of Jesus, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, we bring an hand to the spirit of rebellion on Bowen campus, spirit of disobedience. We bring an hand to you in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Finally, we are going to pray. God spoke to me and said, Son of man, can this bone live? In the word of Ezekiel, he said, Oh, thou knowest God. God said, No, prophesy. Everybody join me. There are many dry life, dry destiny here. Let's prophesy. You can live again. You can live again. Come back to life. Every dry life, you have lost hope. You have lost confidence in yourself. You are contemplating suicide. You don't have any expectation. Every hope seems to be lost. Today you will come back to life. Today you will come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. You will live again. You will live again. In the name of Jesus, you will arise as a mighty army for God. You will arise as a mighty soldier. 
in the name of Jesus, you will fulfill your days. You will fulfill your destiny. You will stand. You will not die. You will not be dry. You will not be small. You will be multiplied in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now identify with me if you want God to take his place one more time in your life. You want God to be the center of your decision, the center of your life. Will you like to please raise up your hand as I close this session? Lift up your hands if you really mean business with God. You want to mark today in your diary. The last Sunday of May, I renew my covenant of work with God. Receive grace right now in the name of Jesus. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. Receive grace to maintain freshness. Receive grace to maintain your prosperity of the spirit. Receive grace to maintain consistent work with God. Receive grace to maintain your fervency in the spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command every lost glory to be restored. The Bible says I will restore them. All the years that Pama Wom and Kanka Wom has eaten. So in the name of Jesus, receive restoration. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Come back to the altar. Let your altar be alive again. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Let's celebrate Jesus together. Hallelujah.